Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, we have uh, discussed in detail about nozzle operation and diffuser operation. So uh, we did a numerical on nozzle operation. So now we will focus on diffuser operation and further on we will do few more uh, numericals uh, covering combined concepts, uh, several concepts that come together when discussing uh, varying area uh, flows. Um, so uh, let us uh, see one by one. Okay. So, first here uh, this is a case of a diffuser uh, that is an intake diffuser. A supersonic inlet as shown in figure is to be designed to handle air. Properties of air are given gamma uh, r is 287 at Mach 1.75. So, this is entry Mach number is 1.75 with static pressure and uh, temperature of 50 kilo Pascal and uh, 250 Kelvin. So, P1 is 50 kilo Pascal and uh, T1 is 250 Kelvin. And determine the diffuser inlet area. So, uh, see uh, notice the kind of inlet that is described over here. Uh, there is a wedge uh, that is protruding into the flow. So, this is more in the lines of a, a mixed compression kind of an intake where there is an external compression taking place by means of an oblique shock and further there is an internal compression also happening inside the duct and there is a possibility of a normal shock also occurring here. So, there is a normal shock here. So, two shocks and then variable area duct. Uh, diffuser is further to uh, so uh, the device is to handle 10 kilogram per second of air. The diffuser is to further decelerate flow after the normal shock so that the velocity entering the compressor is not to exceed 25 meter per second. So, at the exit uh, velocity is given 25 meter per second. So, it is uh, quite small uh, velocity compared to the incoming velocity. Assuming isentropic flow after the shock. So, here uh, you have isentropic flow. So, besides the shocks in other regions it is isentropic. Uh, determine uh, that the area what area is required and find the static pressure at the exit P e. So, this is the uh, problem. So, uh, in supersonic flows uh, since there is uh, uh, a problem of information propagation from uh, downstream to upstream this way it will not go. So, always um, problem solving happens in a particular direction you go from one region to the next. So, that is how uh, we go through this. So, start in uh, between region 1 and 2 uh, which is bounded by an oblique shock. Uh, the angle semi angle of the wedge is 7 degrees. So, corresponding to that there is an oblique shock ok. So, this is 1.75 Mach number M1 is 1.75. So, we know M1 is equal to 1.75 and theta is 7 degrees and beta is 41.87 degrees. So, this is what is known. So, from this uh, uh, how do we go through with an oblique shock problem? We have to find the, the normal component is m 1 sin beta. Uh, this is uh, 1.168 ok. So, uh, once uh, m n 1 is known we can find m um, n 2 uh, by normal shock relations substitute the normal uh, Mach number. So, it is 0 0.8627 P2 by P1 is known if you know this. 
so it is 1.425 mm, and t2 by t1 is 1.1079 okay and uh, m2 is uh, mn2 by sine beta minus theta if you do this you get uh, mn2 as 1.5 okay so uh, p2 by p1 t2 by t1 known p2 is um, 71.25 is kilopascal so 50 kilopascal which is given or here is the static pressure p1 is 50 kilopascal t1 is 250 kelvin so these are static values so it is 71.25 kilopascal and uh, T2 is mm, 276 uh, 0.975 Kelvin. So, 276.975 Kelvin. From here, we can calculate what is density. Density is uh, P2 by R T2, which is 71.25 10 power 3 by 287 multiplied by 276.975 comes out to be 0 0.8963 kilogram per meter cube. Now, we need to find what is mass flow rate m dot is uh, rho 2 a 2 v 2 m dot is given uh, it has to support 10 kilogram per second of air. Mm, we need to find uh, the area that is the area of the intake this ai ai is that is the area that we need to find uh, so a2 now we know properties in region 2 uh, that is what is entering uh, the intake so if we know v2 v2 is m2 multiplied by square root of gamma r t2 uh, this is m2 uh, v2 uh, turns out to be uh, 500.4 meter per second m2 is 1.5 square root of 1.4287276.975 so this gives 500.4 meter per second so a2 is uh, m dot divided by rho 2 v2 you can do this calculation 10 kilogram per second divided by 0 0.8963 multiplied by 500 this is 0 0.0223 meter square so this is the area so at this point uh, the Mach number is 1.5 so at this point uh, there is a mm, normal shock so, you have a normal shock here. So, this normal shock stands here. So, we have to find out the uh, properties uh, across the normal shock in region 3. So, uh, M2 is 1.5. So, N3 is 0 0.7. Mm. Uh, P3 by P2 is uh 2.4583 okay and uh, p03 this is also useful p03 by p02 is 0 0.9297 so from here we get uh, p3 p3 is uh, 175.153 kilopascal and uh, similarly you can get t3 is uh, 365.607 kelvin t3 by t2 is 1.32 so you can get p3 uh, by uh, t3 and also a3 by a3 star you can get this value and 0 0.0943 this is there in isentropic tables not in normal shock tables 
So, once uh, all this is known now uh, we are uh, faced with uh, the point that uh, you need to uh, find out once the velocity goes to uh, 25 uh, meters per second uh, what uh, to uh, do. So, uh, uh, let us just look at that. Okay, so, we will take a look at that point. So, 25 meter per second we are looking at 25 meter per second it is quite small. Uh, now, uh, all through these processes they are all oblique shock waves and isentropic flows. So, they are adiabatic flows that means, uh, stagnation enthalpy is constant or T naught is constant this is the guiding principle. Uh, so, from here uh, you we know what is uh, the velocity at the exit if we find the T naught T naught is uh, T naught is for uh, the main flow we can find T naught by T naught 1 this is for 1.75 flow it is 1.6125. So, T naught 1 is 4 naught 3.125 Kelvin uh, and T e can be found by T 0 minus V square by 2 C p using uh, the uh, energy equation. This turns out to be 401.88 Kelvin. This is uh, V is at the exit 25 meters per second. So, T e is known. Okay. So, uh, what is the Mach number M e is V e by A e which is uh, 25 divided by square root of uh, 1.4287 and 401.88 which is 0 0.0622. So, it is quite small at such small uh, Mach numbers you can also assume uh, th that uh, T naught uh, and P naught is approximately equal to P and T. Uh, it is not a bad assumption because you see uh, the difference between them uh, is hardly uh, 2 Kelvin. So, that assumption can also be made or you can uh, continue to pursue with uh, actual numbers. So, uh, if uh, M E is known then A E can be found out A E by A E star can be found it is 9.3255. Now, we need uh, A e by A i that is uh, what is the area ratio A e by A i. So, this is uh, A e by A e star multiplied by A e star by A i. Uh, now, for A e by A e star the value is known 9.3255. Now, after the shock the flow is isentropic. So, if we take the Mach number after normal shock. So, for that uh, the A star A 2 star uh, A 3 star will be equal to A e star. Okay. So, this will be equal. So, we can write this as A e 3 A 3 star by A i that is A 3 the same as A 3 and this we had found it is 1.0943. So, 9.3255 divided by 1.0943 is uh, 8.522. So, you can get the exit area as um, 0 0.19 meter square. Okay. So, what is uh, P exit? this is what is needed. Uh, for this uh, we can use pressure ratios and calculate it, but now that we have calculated mass flow rates, uh, static temperatures uh, and uh, uh, velocity is 25 meter per second, we can go ahead and convert this rho V A, rho E V E A E to P E by R <coughs> T E multiplied by V E multiplied by A E. Okay, so, A e is known, V e is known, P e is, no, uh, e is not known, T e is known, R is known 
uh, equal to m dot this is 10 kilogram per second it is known. From here uh, you can get what is P e it is uh, 42.82 kilo Pascal ok. So, uh, you see so this particular concept uh, had a diffuser problem, but uh, the diffuser also had uh, oblique shocks ahead of it and a normal shock at the diffuser. So, uh, entry of the diffuser. So, you see this uh, has multiple concepts. So, uh, from here on you see that uh, problems involving uh, all these applications nozzles diffusers uh, they will not be having only one concept they will involve multiple concepts. So, uh, you have to uh, take care of that. So, now let us go to the next problem if we wish to design a supersonic wind tunnel which produces Mach 2.8 flow at standard sea level conditions. That means, uh, at uh, the test section it is standard sea level conditions and Mach number is 2.8 and mass flow is given m dot is 14.6 kilogram per second calculate the necessary reservoir pressure and temperature, nozzle throat and exit areas and diffuser throat area. So, um, uh, basically it is a uh, you have this picture schematic should come uh, there. So, what is nozzle throat was is this nozzle exit area and uh, given that this is m equal to 2.8 um, and p is equal to p test section. So, p 1 is uh, standard C level 1.101.325 1 kilo Pascal and uh, t 1 is uh, taken as 288 Kelvin ok. So, these are uh, uh, the conditions and what should be the diffuser area. So, area of the diffuser throat diffuser throat. So, what are these what is required? So, we know uh, the wind tunnel Mach number 2.8 uh, what should be reservoir pressure? We know pressure is um, 101.325 in ideal operating conditions Mach number is 2.8. So, the pressure that should be given there at P naught is uh, going to be uh, corresponding to 2.8. So, P naught E by P E is uh, 27.14 and uh, that implies P naught is uh, 2749.96 kilo Pascal. Uh, that is in bars it will be 27.5 bars it is quite uh, high pressure you have to give uh, 27.5 bars ok. And uh, what about T naught E? Uh, if you have to achieve um, uh, 288 Kelvin uh, at the test section uh, then uh, as flow expands through the nozzle temperature will reduce. So, that means, much higher temperatures has to be given and uh, that is this ratio is 2.568 implying T naught E is 739.584 Kelvin. So, uh, much higher uh, uh, temperatures need to be uh, provided. So, what is the area uh, of the uh, 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 wind tunnel uh, test section that is the exit area of the nozzle. Uh, we know mass flow rate m dot is 14.6 kilogram per second and uh, pressure and uh, temperature are known. So, from this you can calculate density P by R T. Uh, velocity should be found. So, velocity is Mach number 2.8 multiplied by square root of uh, gamma rt gamma 287 um, multiplied by uh, 288. So, uh, this is velocity it uh, turns out to be 952.48 gamma is 1.4. Uh, so, area is m dot by 
m dot by rho v rho v e this is 0 0.0125 meter per meter square ok. Now, for this uh, 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 Mach number we know a e by a star a e by a star uh, which is 3.5. Uh, so, uh, the during correct operation the throat will work at Mach number 1. So, that is equal to a star. So, throat area is a throat is uh, 0 0.0125 divided by uh, 3.5 this is 0 0.00357 meter square. So, we know uh, the throat area also. Now, uh, the next uh, point here is uh, we have to find what is the minimum area at the diffuser. So, this uh, should be uh, such a way that the internal will start it cannot be uh, the same as the nozzle throat area. So, that is the highlight here. So, Mach number is uh, 2.8 m is equal to 2.8. So, uh, the way it is designed is there is a normal shock standing at the uh, test section. So, for Mach number equal to 2.8 if there is a normal shock. Uh, p not uh, uh, 2 by p not 1 across the normal shock is 0 0.3895 and we use the fact that p not 1 uh, a nozzle throat is p not 2 multiplied by diffuser throat. So, diffuser throat is uh, uh, nozzle throat multiplied by uh, or uh, divided by p not 2 by p not 1. So, this is known. So, diffuser throat is uh, 0 0.00955 meter square. So, diffuser throat is larger than the uh, nozzle throat. So, the aspects of wind tunnel starting is considered here uh, in order to look at the nozzle uh, and the diffuser throat areas. So, uh, with this uh, the aspect uh, related to starting of uh, uh, diffusers should be covered and uh, now we look at uh, several problems uh, related to different concepts in uh, varying area ducts. So, uh, we will go through a few simple problems and uh, two uh, problems that involve uh, multiple concepts. So, uh, that would be done in the coming classes. Thank you.